do begin tonight with Commitment 2016 coverage, night three of our Granite State debates and the candidates for the first congressional district. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tom Griffith. It was a very feisty night for all three on stage. Incumbent Congressman Republican Frank Ginta, Democratic candidate Carol Shea Porter, and Independent Sean O'Connor. I have voted as recently as 2014 for members of both parties. Um, so Which, which Republican did you vote for? You are a Republican. I'm going to back you up on that. I, I, I mean, thought, you see, this is great. I, I, I am a true I moderate because say, they're both trying I to thought, put me into a no, slot. No, no, no. Now, WMUR political director Josh McKelvin moderated tonight's debate, joins us live from the Institute of Politics at St. Anselm College. Josh? Uh, good evening to you, Tom. You know, over the course of the last four elections, Carol Shea Porter and Frank Ginta have developed quite a political rivalry, no question about that, and it's often played out on the debate stage. And while they were certainly not shy about going after each other tonight a little bit with criticisms, they also managed to find some common ground in this one, at least when it came to the independent candidate in this race, and the independent candidate that was on stage with them tonight, Sean O'Connor. Let's get a recap of what did take place that, during that debate with Adam Sexton, who was standing by live. Yeah, Josh, the last three Granite State debates featuring Carol Shea Porter and Frank Ginta have been relatively tense and testy affairs. Tonight was a little lighter, even when they were mixing it up, and that might have had something to do with the fact that there was someone else on stage for them to attack. Aggressive in the race and okay, okay, I got, this, I got this, all right? Okay. In their so, fourth Granite so State debate matchup, Frank Ginta and Carol Shea Porter joined forces to tag team the new candidate on their turf, Independent Sean O'Connor. For the last decade, the voters of this district have had to choose between one hyperpartisan or the other, and they've fired them constantly, one after another after another. Both repeat candidates took turns bashing O'Connor, Shea Porter taking digs at his business record. He had a boutique business that helped people get into law school. We need jobs that people can actually have right now. Ginta slammed O'Connor as a Bernie Sanders progressive. Mr. O'Connor has identified himself as a progressive Democrat, a Bernie crat, uh, and that's why he was running uh, for a year and a half uh, in the Democratic primary. I understand that both the Congresswoman and the Congressman are upset about my meteoric rise in the polls, but the fact of the matter is that I created jobs here in New Hampshire. Shea Porter was first elected to Congress in 2006 on her strong opposition to the Iraq War. When it comes to sending ground troops back to the Middle East to defeat ISIS, she says no. We would not be welcomed. Our presence would not be helpful. Now, do we need special forces there? Yes, we do. Frank Ginta stood up for Rochester conservative activist Jerry DeLemus, who is facing charges in connection with the Bundy Ranch standoff against federal agents in Nevada. He went out there as a in a peacekeeping mission. Do I think that there was government overreach here? Yes, I do. When it comes to whether anyone can change the atmosphere in Congress, all three touted their bipartisan credentials. I've worked for Democrats and I've worked for Republicans. You know, my opponents are hyperpartisan, and so they mock me for that. I actually think that there's some value in that. No other Republican can say that they've gotten six pieces of legislation signed into law by this president. President Obama and I don't agree on much, uh, but he was willing to work with me. It's when the Republicans are, are taking a trip and they are looking for somebody, they told me they like to go with me because I don't fight with them, and I'm very proud of that. So Carol Shea Porter and Frank Ginta had a hard time making eye contact on stage in 2010, 12, and 14. Tonight they managed to find a measure of unity in trying to stiff arm independent Sean O'Connor. How the voters sort all of this out, though, remains to be seen. Josh, let's head back inside to you. Certainly an interesting dynamic in this debate, no question about it. Thanks very much, Adam. Now, both, uh, all the candidates uh, took to the spin room immediately following the debate. Sean O'Connor said that he made his case. Frank Ginta made a pretty good case for why he really is the political outsider in this race, despite the long political resume, while Carol Shea Porter said she's not too concerned about the independent candidate uh, in this race at all. Here's what they had to say. Anybody can run $50, so, and I remind people that I was not the choice in 2006, and you just put your head down and you make the case to the people about why it should be you. So I love the way New Hampshire does politics. Anybody can get on the ballot. There's serving and getting things done, and then there's being an insider within the party, an insider by the establishment. I mean, I, I think it was establishment in this state made it abundantly clear that I'm an outsider. Um, and I will take that label 
uh, anytime. I think that tonight we saw um, why I'm in this election. It was the uh, you know, biannual partisan bickering between Carol Shea Porter and Frank Ginta. Um, and both of them are clearly scared that I'm surging right at the right time because they were attacking me with their typical D.C. politician party lines. And I'm joined now by my colleague WMUR, John DeStaso. He's on the panel tonight. Obviously, Gosh. Frank Ginta and Carol Shea Porter, this isn't their first rodeo. They know what they're uh, doing sure. on the debate stage. We wondered how Sean O'Connor would do, uh, you know, under the spotlight. He didn't wilt. All nope. three of them had a pretty good night. Yeah, I think they all did. It was sort of like a party crash. Everyone had become used to seeing Shea Porter right. and Ginta on stage. Uh, but they did touch on a lot of issues. Uh, they talked about the Second Amendment. They talked about foreign policy. Um, campaign finance report and uh, uh, reform and the uh, influence, if any, of political action committees was also an area where there was a lot of bickering uh, back and forth with O'Connor trying to say that he's sort of the independent in all, on all of these areas. Yeah, and quickly, I mean, they, he may not win this race. He's certainly a long right. shot, Sean O'Connor, but they are concerned about who he's siphoning votes from, and that was very apparent to me. Absolutely. Uh, he's polling about 15 percent, according to our last poll. Uh, the conventional wisdom is, he's wisdom is that he's taking a little more from, from Shea Porter, but that's not absolutely uh, definite. We won't really know until election night. Yeah, the voters will decide that, right? won't absolutely. they? Absolutely. But so much w uh, worry is about all the division that we've seen in this election. Mm -hmm. Well, here's right. a positive sign. You caught yeah, this I as did. they were walking out. Have a look at this photograph here. There Maybe they there is some healing that will take place after all that. They and their families it. walked out uh, together. Okay, we've got to send it back. Thank you very much, okay. John. Uh, Granite State debate, night number four, the final night tomorrow, the second CD debate. We'll send it back to you in the studio, guys. All right, looking forward to it.